right punch is coming, right punch is coming from right here. It's basically a slip. You can turn the body, the hip needs to be toward, come way up, impact, back, punch to the back of the head, or step. Oh, this is Rush, and thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to be taking a look at a technique that's probably unique to Ashara Karate and that technique is called the cutting kick. And I'm saying unique not because I think it only exists in Ashara Karate but mainly I've never really seen it in other martial arts or even other karate styles although I give a benefit of a doubt that it might be called by some other terms out there. Welcome to the Ashara Karate in Singapore channel Let's begin. The cutting kick, or in Japanese, cutting kiku, is a kicking technique used on the opponent's leg in order to upset um, his balance. So depending on your position and timing relative to the opponent, the cutting kick can serve different purposes. So some of the reasons why um, you would use a cutting kick is because you want to, number one, say um, break his balance or upset the opponent's posture, or you can also do a takedown uh, based on the cutting kick. So for instance, um, if you're positioned in front uh, of the opponent, instead of using a typical low kick, um, by doing a cutting kick, um, you can uh, actually in fact turn the opponent in order to expose his blind spot. If you manage to get the side position uh, and you have access to the back leg, you can kick the back leg away in order to lower the hip and to throw your finishing technique towards the hip. And if let's say you have the back position and you cut away or remove the legs from underneath them, it will result in a um, takedown. And another typical um, example which is commonly used in tournaments is that um, when you expect uh, or you manage to catch a high kick coming to your hip, you can take away the supporting leg um, and you know eventually it will become a takedown also. Although in those situations um, in, in Ashara Karate, um, even though the technique is um, considered a cutting kick, but we usually call it a kick to the supporting foot or in Japanese we call it uh, jikuashi geri. So jikuashi meaning the supporting foot and geri means to um, kick. So basically it's a kick to the supporting foot. So in short there are many different um, purposes of the cutting kick depending on your position and depending on the timing that you manage to catch. So in many ways um, the cutting kick is very similar to ashibara used in judo or some other karate styles. Um, except that for Ashibarai, typically you will need to be quite close to the opponent. But for the cutting kick, um, because it's similar to the um, typical low roundhouse kick, you can be at a roundhouse kick um, distance in order to throw the cutting kick. So in that sense, uh, it's a little bit more versatile. You can use a cutting kick at close distance or a little bit more at middle distance. In terms of execution, it seems that the cutting kick is in between the groin kick and the low roundhouse kick. Um, in a sense that when you throw a cutting kick, you want it to be in an upward diagonal angle because you're looking to lift and eventually move the supporting foot, right? Um, as compared to a groin kick where you go directly upwards towards the groin uh, or the typical low roundhouse kick where the angle is a little bit more perpendicular towards the target leg because you're looking to damage the muscle or nerve uh, behind the skin. So the cutting kick again, uh, it's thrown more in an upward diagonal angle. And this is to exploit the weakness of a typical fighting or sparring stance. Um, as demonstrated by the founder over here, the typical stance is strong against pressures coming from the front and back but it is weak from pressures coming from the side especially if the leg is being lifted 45 degrees upwards so the cutting kick technique is used to exploit the weakness in a typical fighting stance and just a bit of fun food for thought in self-defense or free fight practice you can easily substitute the cutting kick to a groin kick or even a knee kick when you open them up you have two options, knee kick to the face, you're opening them up, knee kick to the ribs, or groin kick right here to throw it out. The other thing is if you can't throw him right here, you feel he's already recovered his balance, then kick and bring him down. So we can say that 
the cutting cake, um, at least in Ashara Karate practice, is a safer option um, to not hurt your training partner in the dojo as compared to, you know, if you use the groin kick or the knee kick. So if you want to practice the cutting kick on your own, you need to bear in mind um, two key principles. Number one is footwork. So the cutting kick, as I mentioned before, you can throw it from a close distance or you can throw it from a, a middle distance. But if you're at a middle distance, you would need to take a step in in order to, you know, um, hit the target. And stepping in is good because uh, you have the opportunity to build momentum and you can use that momentum to multiply the force of your cutting kick. In fact, there is a drill that we often do in Ashara Karate practice which is called the stairs drill or sometimes we call it the zigzag drill where you, on a continuous um, basis, you step diagonally backwards and then right after you land on the ground, you immediately bounce forward in order to throw a counter-attack. So that counter-attack can also be a cutting kick. So the idea is that in practical application, uh, when you receive an attack from the opponent, you retreat to a diagonal angle backwards in order to avoid the attack. And before the opponent can um, retreat to recover, uh, you immediately, uh, from the back, bounce forward to throw your own cutting kick or any other counter-attack of your choosing. So that's the first point. The second point is that, as I mentioned, the cutting kick, we want to go at a 45 degree angle upwards and it's more of a lifting technique rather than a kicking technique. So that means um, if you use the typical way of um, executing a kick in karate, right? Where you start with a chamber leg and you open to do the kick. For a cutting kick, you want to hold off opening the leg as late as possible. If your kick is coming in this way, driven by the knee, you want to open up the leg as close as possible to the leg. Because if you open it up too early, uh, it will be not much of a difference as compared to um, the typical low kick. So overall, the cutting kick is, an, is a simple and efficient technique for you to use as a counter-attack if you're looking to break the opponent's balance, um, expose his blind spot, or even uh, take him down. It is a good technique to be used in many different scenarios in self-defense situations um, against uh, an aggressor. You can use the cutting kick in order to bring him closer to the ground so that you can easily um, control uh, the opponent. In a situation for tournament or sparring, you can use the cutting kick uh, to break the opponent's balance and to eventually take him down in order to score a takedown. And in a situation of multiple opponents, you can break the balance of one opponent and quickly deal from one person to the other. So in ending of this video, it's a question for you. In your karate style, what technique do you find unique that you don't really see practice in other martial arts or even other karate styles? So let me know. Uh, I'll be really interested to find out what those techniques are. And if you're interested to learn practical karate online, um, join us via the link uh, in the description box below. This has been the Ashara Karate in Singapore channel and with this we hope you can enjoy karate more. Os.